if tutoring could be integrated in our education system in a whole new way through the National Tutoring Programme, um, I think that would be a wonderful uh, positive step forward for education. I try all the time when I'm tutoring to bring my science into the real world. I, I try not to make my lessons solely another classroom lesson. Um, and I've talked to you, Lida, about this before, you know, asking how they are and really meaning it. Because without that and without them being ready to learn, not a lot is going to go in and you're not going to have knowledge to build off of if they're not ready to learn in the first place. The pandemic has stimulated the government to try and do something dramatic and they've picked on tutoring to do that and I think that's wonderful. I think absolutely the right thing. Welcome to the Qualified Tutor Podcast. I'm your host, Ludo Miller, and I'll be interviewing tutors and thought leaders from across the tutoring landscape to inspire, inform, and motivate you to become the best tutor you can be. The Qualified Tutor Community is a safe and supportive space for tutors who love to learn and grow. We offer training, resources, ideas, and a chance to connect with like-minded tutors. If you'd like to continue the conversation, join our Qualified Tutor Community at www.qualifiedtutorcommunity.org or find it in the show notes. Hello and welcome to our final late night live podcast of the Love Tutoring Festival 2021. Um, I can't really believe that we have got to Thursday evening um, already. What a, a journey we've been on um, as a team and as a, as a cohort of, of attendees over the past four days. Um, we have learned a great deal from the uh, SEND and mental health specialists on the Monday, from the business, small business experts on the Tuesday, from the teaching and learning powerhouses and um, masterminds of education on the Wednesday, to the NTP leaders and, and those that have made it happen uh, today on Thursday the 1st of July. We have learned a huge amount. Um, I am your host tonight, Ludo Miller, and this evening I will be joined by Linda Larby, Hazel Barnett, and Jolyon White. Now, as a brief introduction to the three of our guests this evening, uh, Linda is a university researcher at the Institute of Education uh, at UCL, uh, has uh, recently completed uh, an MSc in, in child development, and uh, is a tutor with, with Manning's Tutors at coordinating their efforts with uh, partner schools as part of the NTP. Linda is also excitingly leading our very first gratitude circle tomorrow morning on Friday the 2nd of July uh, from 9 till 10 a.m. BST. So watch out for that. Hazel uh, has been uh, really be, has been in the tutoring game for longer than, than, than most tutors that we have come across. Um, Hazel is a, a, an active and engaged uh, community member uh, and draws on her MED in, in math education and dyslexia to find solutions to every issue, uh, concern and query uh, for both students and fellow tutors. So thank you for joining us here, Hazel. Our final guest this evening uh, is Jolyon White. Jolyon is a, a tutor, a, a teacher, uh, an entrepreneur, a former honorary research associate at UCL and a science whiz who um, ably connects uh, the real world with learning for his students. I myself am lucky enough to have worked alongside Jolyon uh, in the last few months and we are all uh, lucky that he is here tonight to contribute his experiences and knowledge of the NTP, both from a tutor's perspective and as someone with uh, their, their head above the parapet, shall we say. Um, so all are excellent tutors, NTP or otherwise, uh, in their own right, and that's why uh, they are here this evening. So um, welcome, the three of you, to this evening. I'm going kick, to uh, kick off this evening with uh, one of our favourite questions, and Hazel, I'm going to start with you here. Th that question is drum roll what is your why as a tutor hazel number one is to try to dismantle the barriers to learning um that goes back to my um 
work as a SENCO, Special Educational Needs Coordinator, and, uh, you know, helping to make uh, learning accessible to the students, um, to make a difference after lockdown, um, to complement what schools are doing, and to build confidence by teaching in the way children learn and to encourage them to be reflective learners. Very good. That's Very my good. why. <laughs> yeah, those are three whys. Jolyon. Um, well, I, in the fame, in the words of Douglas Adams, I'm a great fan of science, um, and as such, I'm a missionary. I want to convey that love of science to young people so that they can see how it affects them, how it fits into their lives. I mean, my introduction covered that perfectly. I try all the time when I'm tutoring to bring my science into the real world. Um, and, and that way, I hope that students will realise it's not frightening, it's not mysterious. Well, it is mysterious, but it is accessible. They can get to it. They can do it just like any other subject. So that would be my why. And I guess, like a lot of teachers, I, I'm, I'm fairly extrovert, and it satisfies that extroversion in me to have that communication and that contact time with students. It's a lot of fun. And being on podcasts, yes? I'm being on podcasts, yeah. And yeah, that, that works perfect. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> you just have to go and press the mute button every now and again, Ludo, to shut me up, okay? <laughs> um, Linda, can I turn to you? Can you try and follow that <laughs> answer from Jolly? <laughs> I'll try. Um, my why is certainly just helping the next generation. I mean, this generation of children growing up now, um, as with every generation, um, they're facing different issues and some of the same issues that um, children have faced as they're growing up. And I was lucky enough, and I'll talk more about this in the Gratitude Circle tomorrow, but I was lucky enough to have amazing tutors and um, teachers in my life. And I think they really instilled in me um, the sort of qualities that a good tutor would have. So I'm sort of passing that on to um, today's generation. And I've, I've really enjoyed um, being involved with education. So I used to be a teaching assistant um, for around four years. And that, that um, inspired me to do my master's in child development. And then I think naturally I came into teaching just wanting to get even more involved with this generation and supporting them in the way they need. Very good, wonderful. Well, there's a a great spread of of, of whys there, and it's it's always a I feel a great start to a conversation to 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 kind of to lay down the, the perspectives of, of of our speakers ahead of us. So thank you for the, those answers for the three of you. Now, um, this conversation, uh, the, the title of this podcast is 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 being an NTP tutor, uh, and today we've heard a great deal of conversation about the NTP, about what's gone right and and what's perhaps not gone quite so well, and the impact it may have, the findings from the first year, and, and a little bit about the legacy that the NTP could have going into future years. But what I want to start with the three of you tonight, being tutors um, on the front line, as it were, of the NTP, is what, in your view, what has, what has gone well in, with regard to the NTP? What has the NTP done well? Jolene, can I start with you? Yes. Um... It's done a lot of things well. It's brought tutoring to the forefront. It's, it's given it a place in the public's eye that it never had before. Um, it has gone to some extent to breaking down the concept that it's a, it's a middle-class stroke, high net worth um, activity. It's gone to some extent to break that down. Um, and I don't want to move on to the negatives because your question is what it's done well. And I think the other thing that, that we haven't really appreciated yet is the, the fact that it has addressed the structural problems of when you start to try and tutor tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of children, students um, that have never been tutored before. It, it's revealed those structural problems and the agencies, and in all their different ways, have attempted to address this. So there is, if we can ever bring that together, there is a wealth of understanding between those agencies of how to get tutors 
in front of students how to work with schools and tutors together. So in those things, it, it's, it's opened that whole can of worms. I don't think it's solved it yet. I think there's a long way to go before it's solved it. And I think, and I think there'll be structural changes within schools if tutoring is to continue. Uh, they'll have to be for, for, for it to integrate properly. But just at the moment, it, it, it's opening that up as a possibility. Hey, Hazel, do you, do you, are you inclined to agree with, with what Jolyn has let, uh, put forth there? Absolutely, yes. The things that I wrote down um, are um, it's, it's raising the profile of tutoring as a profession. Um, but I think um, linking tutors with schools in a more um, intentional way is, is wonderful. Um, I agree it's got a long way to go because, um, you know, the, the amount of administration and connectedness that is needed, um, you know, is huge and we're, and, and we're just at the beginning of the process. But if tutoring could be integrated in our education system in a whole new way through the National Tutoring Programme, um, I think that would be a wonderful uh, positive step forward for education. Yeah, um, I, I think... It's that, that that language of next steps forward is is I think pretty central here because I don't think anyone predicted that the first year of the NTP was going to be a kind of rip roaring success and kind of uh, in the language of the NTP itself I don't think anyone believed that it was going to catch up all the students in year one I think as just as Jolly and this uh, and you have been saying Hazel it's about starting that process of deploying tutors or, or starting that process of making use of tutors. Um, because we know that tutoring is effective. And, and that's really the bottom line. Tutoring is an effective way to educate children. So, Linda, I hope I haven't put words into your mouth. Um, what, what, what were your thoughts on this? What were your thoughts on what the NTP has done well this year? Um, I would definitely echo Jolene and Hazel in that there are um, teething issues with it. But I in the most positive ways, I think the NTP has um, helped these children where there's been massive disruption to their education. And even with these teething issues, there's been a lot of connectivity. So I've had students that have never talked to each other in school before, actually, you know, starting to interact, not just in my lesson, but outside of my lesson and I think that has been you know not exactly a goal of the NTP scheme but it's definitely been a positive um and I I just think the support that is being offered by these tutors is better than having nothing at all so I think um there has been an effort to catch up and to help these um, students to you know reach certain goals and to bridge this gap that the pandemic has caused. So I do feel that um, it's definitely been a step in the right direction. There's a lot of different things that is yet to come and we need to work on these things. But um, in terms of just being the support and being there, I think is probably the most positive thing to come out of the scheme. Yeah, and, and I'm going to um, go back to you, uh, actually, for, for this point, Linda, as well. It, did you feel that when you began as, as an NTP tutor that you felt your role was going to be more uh, academic-focused or more kind of pastoral support-focused? Was, was, was there any inclination that you were going to be doing more than, than one of the other? No. So I think going in, like many tutors, I had in my head this was purely academic. There's a gap and, you know, there's been a whole pandemic. These children are behind. Some children didn't engage much with their online teaching in schools already. So I understood it as, um, you know, helping to bridge this gap that has been created by the pandemic. But the more I got into it and the conversations that I have had with my um, TTs sort of in my lessons um even though it's solely a lesson on say science or English there has been a lot of um pastoral things crop up so um 
you know, I, I try not to make my lessons solely another classroom lesson. Um, and I've talked to you, Lida, about this before, you know, asking how they are and really meaning it. Because without that and without them being ready to learn, not a lot is going to go in and you're not going to have, you know, a lot of, you know, knowledge to build off of if they're not ready to learn in the first place. So the first 10 minutes, um, ish whilst everyone's filtering into the lesson is very much how are you the icebreakers that I normally have in my lessons and just gently getting into the flow of learning so I think now you know it is a mixture of both for me yeah Jolly would you, would you say that your expectations of what your role was going to be at the start do you think those were borne out uh yes they were um uh I mean I've taught in classroom I've taught science um, in secondary schools and uh, I think the problems go back way before the pandemic the pandemic has simply um, highlighted difficulties and issues I think we're running schools with classes that are very large um, and, and we're running classes of 35 even in some cases 40 children in a class with a single teacher and with the best will in the world um, you're going to be doing a lot of crowd control in that. Now, there are outstanding teachers and they do survive and they do teach and some students come out of that well. But, you know, if a student misses something in a class that size, the chances of catching up without some small group teaching in there to support is, is very unlikely they're going to catch up. I had three students this morning that I was tutoring and... They're, 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 I mean, initially I said, you know, do you like science? Just an opener. I've never taught them before. Um, no, we don't like science. Okay, why don't you like science? What, 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 what is it about it that you don't like? The teacher goes too fast. Well, the teacher's got no choice. They've got a curriculum to do. They've got a timetable to hit. They've got to, they've got to hit particular deadlines because that's what the national curriculum says they must hit. These students are... Uh, expected to get something between four and six um, at GCSE. Um, and yet, you know, talking to them for 10 minutes or so, you know damn well they're capable of getting set of, of six, seven, even, with a little bit of proper teaching. You know they are. They're not stupid. There's nothing about them that's stupid. Um, but I think those, those problems were there intrinsically in the system before. The pandemic has stimulated the government to try and do something dramatic and they've picked on tutoring to do that and I think that's wonderful I think absolutely the right thing I, I don't even call it tutoring I call it small group teaching um, because that's what it is I'm not teaching single students one-to-one -one. I'm teaching groups of three normally um, and that's perfect I like that but I think I think that's that's where we're coming from what we're doing I think is making a step actually in the right direction for education um, yes, we need them in big groups for some things, and we need good teachers who can do that. But we also need to get them down into small groups and deal with their individual personal needs rather than thinking of them as just, a, you know, just meat going through a sausage machine. That, that, that's, where, that's where I'm coming from. And, and, and that's why I don't teach big groups anymore in a classroom. I teach small groups because I can do a hell of a lot more. I can teach a group of three. I can't teach a group of 40. I'm not good enough. Well, you have a different skill set. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I do Hazel, mentality. Yeah. Hazel, what, what, what kind of um, group sizes were you, were you tutoring? Um, were, you, were you tending to be one-on-one -on -one or were you tending to be small group? In the tutoring, past, but, you know, tutoring? going back years and years from when I started in 1991 and then went into different directions and then back again into tutoring, um, it was always one to one. So this uh, small group tutoring is a is a whole new dynamic for me. And uh, to be quite honest, the first time when I had three students I'd never met before, I was absolutely terrified. And uh, you know, because I didn't feel confident with the technology, and they didn't have their cameras on. Um, and so I, I had to rely on voices. And they were from a school in Sheffield. One of them had moved from London. She was easily discernible, but the other two. I just had two Sheffield accents from girls and I didn't know which one was which. You know, it was just, I found it really hard and there were technical problems to do with the company. 
they got the wrong link. They've been sent the wrong link. So they were coming in under the name of the company owner. <laughs> and uh, nobody could solve this link problem. So, you know, there were all sorts of technical things going on and me trying to manage Bramble and all of this. So, uh, um, you know, the first few sessions, I was just really anxious beforehand, I must say. Um, but I'm, I'm, I've got some um, groups of three, some year eights in, in uh, one of the schools that I'm working with at the moment. Um, and they're just absolutely lovely. They, they work well together. And uh, But in the past, I've, I've done class teaching in an independent school. So um, I've been used to that as well, the, the big group, and then the middle-sized group for literacy support. So I suppose I've done all different sizes. But uh, I'm getting used to the triple, yeah. I think with the one-to-one, -one, I do like the one-to-one because -one, I've kind of feel I've got a helper gift more than a leadership gift. So I, I, I like to just, you know, get to know the one-on-one. -on -one. But if the, if the person is very shy and awkward and I feel awkward, then that can be really tense. So, yeah, sometimes having the larger number sort of diffuses it a bit, unless they're a bit tricky, like one of them says, this one, the other one's just smashed me in the face, and, like, you've got no camera, so you can't see if anyone has smashed anyone in the face because they're <laughs> being, you know, uh, just being a bit cheeky. Um, but they're in the school setting in that case, so I, I say, have you got a teacher there watching you? <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, it's been a huge, steep learning curve, but... I'm glad I've persevered with it, actually. So uh, it's a yeah. whole new type of career for me, teaching online. Yeah, I mean, I would challenge anyone, yeah, exactly, as, as Hazel says, to have to have learned as much and as quickly about online tutoring as Hazel has, especially given that you know, Hazel's been in the education sphere for so long. Three and, different platforms I've had to teach on. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, learning not one is no. not enough. Um, so kind of on that theme, Linda, I'm going to turn to you here. What... what the theme of, of what you have learned off the back of the NTP, whether that was because of the NTP or because, you know, online tutoring was coming, was forced upon us, you know, anyway, anyway, what, what skills have you learned as a tutor through your work during the NTP? Linda? Um, I would definitely say, you know, I don't know if this is quite be a skill, but finding out what, these children actually need help with so sort of investigative skills I guess um, because even if a school has provided certain guidance um, the children are very honest with what they are struggling with and what they'd like to do in the next lesson so you know I've sort of had to break down certain lessons and rearrange certain things and get reorganized in order to teach these children um, the specific things that they'd like to actually get help with. Because um, a lot of the time, I guess, schools give out this guidance and sometimes they don't give any out at all. But this, the children are very honest with, you know, things that they'd like to work on. So it's a lot of chopping and changing sometimes. It's a lot of finding extra things or thinking on the spot. Um, you know, different ways that you can explain something, different, you know, forms of media that you could use and, you know, just working on the spot and being able to chop and change as as is required, really. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So so on, on that similar, on that same theme, Jolyon, working on the spot, having to be, you know, responsive in the moment in these sessions because they're probably unlike any other sessions that, tutors have had before and you, you've just mentioned there one tip that you had about uh, students with their cameras off how have you found that kind of completely different atmosphere and vibe to these sessions than there has been probably before in your tutoring or teaching career the first session the first session I had with no camera it's working with Bramble Bramble does have a video facility um, but it only works uh, on certain devices and the students on the whole have equipment which is too cheap for it to work. So uh, they don't have video. So normally with Bramble, you're working without. First time I had it, a bit disconcerting. Um, and it's disconcerting partly because, you know, as you say, you don't have to be afraid to ask who's speaking, but you know, you don't even know from their names nowadays, or I don't because I'm not that multicultural enough. I don't know from their names whether they're girls or boys. I've had that. When they're, yeah. when they're, when they're year nine, um, 
you know, the, the, or even year 10 sometimes, it, it's quite tricky to tell. When they get to year 11, it's easier. Um, but, uh, but year 9 and 10, it's a bit tricky. So, again, you, you've got to get over this. You, you just have to get over it and say, yeah, okay, who answered that question? Who's speaking? And eventually you will start to recognize their voices. And, you know, if you say, right, okay, you were out playing football today, okay? And one of them says, you know, well, I'm a girl. I don't play football. Well, and my answer to that is, well, why not? I mean, everybody should be playing mm-hmm. football nowadays, in my opinion. Um, so, yes, it is a bit odd. And you don't get the emotional feed. Sorry, you don't get the visual emotional feedback. And that, and that again, there is a whole bit of signaling. But, you know, if you were a blind teacher, and there's plenty of those around, you, you'd have to cope without visual signals. Uh, so you just learn to do it. Um, and you do have to ask a lot of questions. You know, there was a thump this morning um, during, my, um, during my tutorial session that I was doing. Um, and, I, and I said, well, what's happened? Oh, somebody's come over and kicked him. <laughs> well, OK. All right. Fair enough. Uh, ha- has the teaching assistant just left the room by any chance? Yes. Oh, right. OK. Is he all right? Yeah, he's OK. Is he going to come back online? Yes, he is. He's gone over to kick him and get and, and, and take his microphone. Right, okay, fair <laughs> enough. Now come back. Um, okay, he's back now. He's plugged in. He can hear you. He can speak to you now. His pre- previously, his microphone was messing around, so he was sharing a mic with the guy next to him. God knows about social distancing. I have no idea what was going on with that. But you know what I mean. This is the kind of thing you just have to relax and get into it and get into the swing, and then you start bringing your stuff in, your, your, you know, your wow factor stuff in your science and try and get them to, 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 to interact. You do, I think, without visual, have to get a lot more back from them. Mm. They've got to participate. because Otherwise, you've no idea what they're doing. Um, you know, and if you're not getting regular feedback, you don't get it. So you can't go into lecture mode. Uh, and, that, and that is something I, I, I have learned really learn to do tutor- in a tutorial situation where there's no camera. Other than that, you just get on with it and do it. Yeah. Um, I guess it's difficult to be responsive to a student, isn't it, when you can't see them because we get so much from, from the visual cues of, of a learner. Um, so absolutely, Hazel. Um, and you, you don't know, um, but I've learned that you can do clever things with Google, but you don't, if you're setting them a task and you're doing, they're doing a bit of independent work, you don't know if it's their work or which one of them, you know, I write down scores and that, but you don't know which one has actually produced the work or whether, you know, because you can't see anything whether they look at each other's. Not, not that that really matters, but when, in these early days with this school from Sheffield, I, you just have to think on the spot, what on earth am I going to do? So until I'd got the voice, I didn't completely master the two of the voices, but I, on Bramble, I just assigned a different pen colour to them all. So we just started to do some tasks. And then I said, so-and-so, um, now you, you, it's your turn. Can you um, write something on this graph or on this shape? Now it's your turn with this colour. So I had to kind of do it that way uh, to distinguish by the colours of pen that they were working on the Bramble notebook. But you just have to think on your feet and try and come up with good ideas on the spur of the moment. But yes, yeah, yeah it's all good fun. L- Linda, any, any good ideas that have come to you on the spur of the moment that, you, uh, that, that come to you? Uh, in terms of technology? Or yeah, in terms of just ways that you've reacted in the moment uh, um, in the GP session. I guess, you know, in terms of Bramble, you're, it's sort of like a big whiteboard. So a lot of the time, if there is a misunderstanding on a, um, a topic, especially in biology, I end up drawing, <laughs> drawing it out and relating it to um, something that the kids sort of are familiar with. So I guess there was a time, I think it was a biology lesson, we're talking about covalent bonds. And um, I was trying to get across that it's a bond formed with um, where there's a sharing of um, electrons. And there was there was just no, nothing going in to this um, child. So I, I used the example and I literally drew out um, some sick children and I was saying, you know, if this is your friend, you share your sweets with them and then it might strengthen your friendship, might strengthen your bond. 
And that was very in the moment, <laughs> very like, very out there. So I was even thinking in my head, is he even going to relate this to chemistry? But he did get it in the end. So. I hope we will never see this whiteboard as well. I hope no one <laughs> never will, because I, I was really bad at drawing those sweets and children. <laughs> To join the growing number of qualified tutors, enroll now for the Level 3 Qualification for Tutors. This eight-week online facilitated course covers the roles and responsibilities involved in teaching and learning, with a particular focus on inclusion, assessment and feedback. Upon completion, you'll be awarded a Level 3 in Education and Training from Ofqual recognised training provider Highfield Qualifications. You will also gain a Qualified Tutor Quality Mark, the independent quality mark for tutors. Whatever your starting point, a qualification for tutors has to be the next step. Enroll today at qualifiedtutor.org forward slash training. Jolene, I'm sure you found yourself relating uh, covalent bonds to funny kind of real world problems in the past. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I probably covered it slightly. I mean, I mean, I think Linda was saying she was try, trying to fit, fit this into a biology lesson, weren't you? Is that what you said to begin with? I didn't quite hear. Or, or was it chemistry? I think I might have said biology, but I meant chemistry. <laughs> you meant chemistry, right? I was, I was I gonna meant say, chemistry. I, I was going to say, suddenly trying to bring covalent bonding because you've got a gap in knowledge in biology is, is a fairly familiar <laughs> one um, because you're busy doing one subject and you suddenly find they haven't picked up the stuff from the other. So you have to jump sciences. Um Yes, uh, uh, you do. And, and and you've got this lovely PowerPoint on the side that you're busy hooking images over into Bramble as you go along. And then suddenly you realise it's not going in anymore. Um, so what I do is I do a lot of um, uh, assessment, um, formative assessment during the uh, during the lesson. Um I think this is really important when you haven't got a visual cue and, and you've got to try and involve all three of them in the formative assessment. And then you've got to be prepared to say, oh, stuff the rest of the PowerPoint. We're going over to drawing. Um, the one tip I would have, and this isn't just with Bramble, this is with any of the platforms, is don't have one device. You know, have your, um, your laptop like we have now, like that, but on the side, um, also log in your your tablet and don't log it in with sound log it in with no sound and then and then and then um and then use that as your drawing platform so that you you put the whiteboard up on that and you and you start drawing and and yeah. that, that makes a big difference now we're taught that when we're doing bramble but a lot of people you know have been set up on team and zooms are sitting there trying to draw with the touchpad on the computer and it or with the mouse and it's it's very difficult to do I'd, I'd say, actually, over the 18 months I've been shooting online, I have actually got quite good at drawing with the trackpad. But it's no, it's never better than, than, than using a, exactly one of those graphic tablets. Hazel, thank you for, for showing us, proudly showing us yours there. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think it's, it's very important to know that, that most of obviously the NTP tuition this year was was online uh, and that tutors who began thinking that they would be going into schools and working you know in little kind of breakout rooms but physical breakout rooms in schools then had then realized that they were going to be you know they were going to be moving online and that that was always that was part of of you know some of the NTP tuition partners knew that they were going to be doing it online you know um, all the way through and and some um, believe that they'd be going into schools and then, and then were forced to move online. So there's certainly been a lot that NTP tutors have had to learn very quickly uh, and coupled with the fact that as we've talked about, you know, these are um, children who would never have normally received tuition and whose parents would never have understood really or, or would never have accessed tuition before. That's not something that's been in the family. There's not great understanding about it. Um, and, and all of these factors mean that when these students and the schools and these tutors were, were thrown together to, to kind of come up with a, a solid <laughs> learning plan um, on the spur of the moment. You know, it was incredibly hard and I don't think we can underestimate just how hard, you know, at its foundations that was. Um, so certainly, you know, the, if we start 
kind of um, creeping into this territory of, oh, you know, this happened, this happened, this happened. That's simply because that really was the, the kind of the, the, the base nature of this. Um, but I would like to, to look ahead to the next, to the future years of the NTP, because we know now that this, this is not just going to be a one-year programme and that this uh, programme will move into its second and its third and its fourth years and eventually it will be likely to be phased out such that the schools who wish to, to, to keep those partnerships in place uh, do so. But um, Hazel, looking, looking to the future of, of the NTP, do you think that, um, that the model should be altered or do you think that the model works as it is? It just needs a couple of years of practice. I think the model needs to be altered. I think um, that um, particularly um, there's been low attendance in, 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 you know, in lots of classes. I've heard this from lots of, of tutors. And I was in the, the group session earlier with um, Sharon Crawley, is it Crawley? Um, and St John something, some uh, very <laughs> important people, it seemed to me, um, talking about... Um, the timing of so, so much going on in secondary after school, three, like I do one and a half hours from 3.15 to 4.45. And that's a big ask of students if they've, they're tired from school and then, they, um, uh, and then they've got homework and they vote with their feet, unfortunately. And, and apparently this is quite a, a common phenomenon. But uh, yeah, I think the basic model's okay. But I think the communication between schools, agencies and, and tutors um, what could be could improve um but i know it's been manpower and, and getting the right people but one of the good things that came out of this session earlier was a very this lady sharon very enthusiastic she said um if you want a liaison person between tutor and and school don't go for the head teacher or the senko or people that are over busy get a ta who or a class teacher who's really got a vision for it and got the time and the motivation to chase the children up to inspire them and to encourage them to go along to the sessions and i thought that was a really good point you know someone who's got the time and enthusiasm to inspire the children yeah this is a really important part of your education i think all the different bits are a bit precarious and they've all got to work right at the same time for it to work but it's it has got potential but i think maybe the timings in the day need looking at yeah absolutely jolian i see it in two ways i see an evolution which is at the micro scale where we need to improve the system um, the way it's working. So compliance, attendance, is a really big issue. Tutoring does not work if you, don't, if you never get in front of the students. That has to be dealt with. And there are two sides to that. Um, one is getting the link to the school uh, improved, and that's absolutely right. I, I totally think that, that that is at the moment not good. The interface between the agencies and the schools is not is not sufficiently good. So I think so. The, there's the micro scale, and and that's evolutionary. And and the NTP can play a very important role in that. But I also happen to believe that there is something that is revolutionary, and that is bringing small group teaching into into the, the children's lives. And and I don't think it has to happen in school. I think it can happen earlier. I mean, German kids don't go to school at nine or nine o'clock or whatever. They go to school at seven. Um, so we can do a little bit in the morning and I'm getting work coming through asking for morning tutoring and they can work later in the evening a little bit. You know, they can go into sort of seven o'clock. I mean, come off the Xbox, mm. you know, you don't need to go straight on the TV when you walk home. Go on, you, you're on a computer, right? Well, have half an hour or an hour's tuition. Maybe an hour's the wrong interval. Maybe we should be doing a few 45 minute sessions. And maybe when they're in year 11, we should be doing some hour, hour and a half sessions. I don't know. But we need to bring that in. And then we need to be doing in the classrooms or, or in the school setting the things that can only be done there. So, yeah, we can't do physical education online. No, we can't do it. We can't do practicals online very well. They have to be done in a laboratory. Um, we can't do field trips. Or, or maybe we should be putting tutors on field trips to help. I don't know. But we don't generally do field trips. So, again, those things have to be done through the school. But, you know, once the basic outline of the curriculum has been presented to the student, 
Can the school not then interface with tutors and say, look, please, would you make sure these students have reached this point? By whatever road you need to take them through to get them there, but we want them at this point. And then as tutors, we can then have the flexibility to use our skill and our, 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 our creativity to take those students, those three students, through from where they are and their understanding at that point to where the teacher wants them for the next session. And I, and I think I think that's the way it has to be going forward. So it's much more like a university model of lecture and seminar and tutorial. And I think we need to have the hierarchy. But when you start doing that, you're starting to talk about having to redesign the physical structure of schools. Mm. You know, they don't, they don't need, you know, the classrooms have to be different. They have to be more like lecture theatres. Um, and, 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 and how you staff them becomes different. You probably need more TAs. I, I don't know. Quite how it's all going to work out, I don't know. I don't have the answers to everything. But I do think the education system we had, we have, um, is already creaking. It's not broken yet. It's creaking. Um, and, and I think we, we, we need to rethink it especially as we go forward, having to educate children for a world that we don't even know what it's going to look like. Mm. Um, so these children have got to be, as we were learning a couple of days ago uh, from Ian's talk, you know, we've got to make them creative thinkers. They've, they've got to be able to think their way out of problems. Mm. And, and we've got to help them do that. But I don't think, you know, talk and chalk and sausage machine education is the way anymore. I, I don't think it was, ever was really, to be honest. Yeah. Linda, how, how do you see the NTP, the, the, the attitude of the NTP kind of moving moving forward? Um, I think, like, to echo Hazel and Jolyon, there is a lot of teething issues with the NTP. Um, moving forward, there has to be some sort of plan in place for things like attendance. Um, a lot like Hazel and probably Jolyon, I found myself on a lot of occasions, and I have to say most of my students do come, have a good session, and um, we can move on the next week. But I have also been sat in a classroom by myself, waiting for students to come, contacting the school liaison officer that is the contact in the school, but also my agency, and that is an NTP that's meeting in a room. So I think it has to be um, that it has to be fine-tuned. And I think what the NTP could possibly um, benefit from is listening to the teachers, maybe having, you know, quarterly or termly meetings with some of the NTP teachers to actually find out what's been going on, um, evaluating what has been you know put through so far and it's sort of just getting feedback as they go along and trying to fix these issues as we go along as well um I definitely think small groups is going to be the way forward because I have seen some of my children literally grow so much in confidence having the first lesson where everyone's almost silent and I just feel like I'm talking the whole lesson to the end of the session, they're asking questions, building up on each other's answers. And I'm not sure that is going to happen in a classroom of 30 plus students. So I definitely think small group teaching is something that should be here to stay and the NTP scheme can help with. Um, but like I said, there's a lot of ironing out to do. But parents, schools and tutors should be involved in this process and evaluating as things go along. As, yeah, reflecting on, on progress and advantages and disadvantages as we go along. I think that's something that was never built into this year's model, was it? it was, was the ability to reflect and feedback as it was going along because there was just too much prep work to go into the foundations of it. Um, so, what I'm hearing is a, is a greater lead time, more, more communication. Um, and, and I do hope that that will improve as, 
as those relationships and as those structures between tutor, parent and school improve. Hazel, just please do... do. Sorry, I think it's, um, in all the different jobs I've done, I think it's a uniquely lonely kind of, kind of situation, tutoring on the NTP, because you don't have any feedback from anybody really about anything apart from the students might say, oh, that was good and I understood it and you, and you can take from that feedback. But if students don't come, you don't know if it's, you've been a bad tutor or there are other reasons, but you just... I did have a, a note from mum that someone was going to the dentist, which was fine. So I knew that that's why they've been a regular. So that was good. But when I... I've got one private student and I know the mum and the, and, and the student very well. And I liaise with the mum and I send information through to help her to prepare for a, for a test. And, you know, I get feedback, oh, she really likes your teaching, etc. But with the NTP, you know, and I've worked in a school situation, you're part of a team, you discuss, you know, you, you support each other in, in, in your teaching and that kind of thing. Um, but just not knowing why they don't come and, and not being able to find out and, and you know, not knowing you know, whether you, what you're doing is working to serve the school and the teacher, whether you really are filling in the gaps effectively and that kind of thing. I do think, you know, in the moment, it's quite a lonely type of teaching. That's why I'm glad I've got qualified tutor to be part of. <laughs> Come here and <laughs> yeah. get some uh, encouragement. Yeah, it, would be, it, would be, it would be interesting to bring together, you know, NTP tutors from a variety of, of partners and, and even bring in the academic mentors to the conversation um, I feel like that's still probably a couple of years off, given that independent tutors are just beginning to get to kind of know each other. But um, certainly that's a, a look to the future, Hazel. Now, we must we must draw this, this, this conversation to a close. So um, I we must draw it to a close because of our, our, our listeners' attention spans. And we must draw it to a close because um, it is absolutely pitch black in Jolyon's room there. <laughs> you can just <laughs> see that the lights have gone out completely. <laughs> Um, that's a signal from from Mother Nature that uh, there we go. <laughs> oh, there we are! A new lease of life to this. Okay. Well, podcast. that was part one. We'll, we'll move on to part two now. Um, no, um, thank you, uh, Hazel. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Jolyon, for for contributing your your thoughts there. Um, it's it's not every day that you get to hear from three NTP tutors all in one place feeding off each other. <laughs> so um, that was a privilege, certainly for me, and I hope for our listeners as well. Um, so thank you both. Uh, Thank you both. Thank you, all of you. Um, I, I think by both, I meant both the speakers and both our listeners. So thank you, Richard. Uh, thank you to the wonderful Jack who kept the conversation so alive in the, in the chat box as, as he always does. Thank you to Sadia, to Annette, to Charlotte uh, and to Elizabeth who was here with us earlier. Cheerio then, everyone. Goodbye. Thanks very much. Thank you, Ludo. Thank you, Ludo. Thanks for listening to the Qualified Tutor Podcast, where tutors share their expertise to support the tutoring community. If you'd like to continue the conversation, join our Qualified Tutor Community at www.qualifiedtutorcommunity.org or find it in the show notes below. We exist to connect, share and learn with you because tutoring is a small job that makes a big difference.